Thanks, Bill. And um, it's good to be here with all of you this morning. And it's a beautiful morning, and God is good. And yeah, his word is powerful. And that was a beautiful psalm. And just letting those words soak over me for a second here. Um, yeah, it's a privilege to come up here and be able to give the Torah portion. And um, yeah, this is a uh, this is a a powerful Torah portion this week. And um, it's interesting how you were you were speaking from the Book of Psalms because that's actually the most quoted uh, book in the New Testament. But today in our Torah portion, we're gonna begin with the most quoted book of the Torah, which is Deuteronomy, and the most quoted prophet, which is Isaiah. And those are actually number two and three for most quoted books in the New Testament. Um, and the Torah portion here begins with Deuteronomy from chapter one and it goes all the way to chapter three, verse 22. And in Isaiah, it goes from chapter one, the very beginning, at verse one, all the way to verse 27. So we have the beginning of both of these books, which are the most quoted books in the in New Testament besides Psalms. And then for the New Testament, we have Matthew 24, 1 to 22. So um, the Torah portion this week is called Devarim, which actually means words. And it was really fitting because you were talking about the power of, of words, the word of God. And, um, you know, this might be specifically referring to, to Moses speaking to the children of Israel because um, the book of Deuteronomy is really like recapping all of their journeys in, in the wilderness and, and, um, and since they, they were freed from Egypt and everything. So um, it's really his words to the people. But, but I was thinking about the idea of, of the word because it's really God's word through Moses speaking. And, um, and the word of the Lord is powerful. The scriptures are powerful. The word of God and they are life. Um, I was thinking about how the word of the Lord to Moses in Deuteronomy, that's the word of God. He is speaking it. And then Jesus was the word made flesh. The word is prophetic, and you're going to see that in the book of Isaiah and Matthew, prophetic words. And through the word of God, he spoke the world into existence. Jesus said, through your words, you will be justified. Through your words, you will be condemned. And it says that um, if you confess with your mouth, so the words of your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And believe that in your heart. Because words always have to line up with what you truly believe. That's, the, that's where the real word is. And the Bible is what God truly believes. It's his truth. So let's begin in the book of, of Deuteronomy here. I'm just going to read a little bit of, of it from the very beginning. It says, these are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness. And then it goes on to talk about, you know, how, how um, he appointed leaders and how they refused to enter the promised land and their penalty of having to wander in the wilderness. And then how at the end of that, they defeated uh, Sihon and Og, uh, some of the Canaanite kings. So I'm going to turn now to the, to the end of um, chapter 3 says, and this is verse 21, and I commanded Joshua at that time, your eyes have seen all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. So will the Lord do to all the kingdoms into which you are crossing. You shall not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. So let's turn to, um, I want to turn to the Gospel of Matthew now, and that is chapter 24. Verse 
I'm just going to read this. And like I said before, the word of God is prophetic. And um, Jesus was said to be, like Moses said, there's a prophet that's going to come. And all of Israel must listen to this prophet. And Jesus is that prophet. And his words foretell the future. Just as God spoke through Moses in prophecy. And you'll see in Isaiah as well. So let's read this. This is a powerful passage talking about the the last days before he returns. It says, Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, you see all these things, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And of course his words were fulfilled in in 70 AD when um, the temple was destroyed. And um, so it goes on from there. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the close of the age? So there's two events here. There's the temple being destroyed, but then there's the sign of his coming and the end of the age, which he's speaking into as well here. And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And that word nation there, it can mean ethnicity against ethnicity. And you can see how you know, with the Arab Spring, with so many of the places in the world, China, with the, the, the Uyghurs, and, and um, even in America, the, the, what's talked about with, with racism, that's how that's actually being fomented by, by, um, by those who would take away freedom. And he, so these things are happening in the world today. So see that you are not alarmed for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. And so with birth pains, you, you will notice everyone who, who's here is well aware that they get closer together and they get stronger as we get nearer to the end. So there may be times of reprieve where the pain goes away for a bit, like we're going through a bit of pain here in 2020, but the reprieve gives way to a greater pain, and that's the coming of the kingdom. So, so um, it's, it, we don't have to fear as believers. That's the main thing. We know these things are coming. We know it's going to be challenging, but when the darkness gets darker, when the pain gets more severe, the light will be stronger, and our love will increase. And it says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of lawlessness or Torahlessness, it's really the, the word, the laws of God, because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Let's turn to Isaiah for a second, just to end this. So right at the beginning of Isaiah is where it starts. And this is so amazing. Um, we are in the heritage of people like Isaiah who saw the glory of God, who saw visions of the Lord. And so it says, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children I have reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its, 
master's crib, but Israel does not know and my people do not understand. And then he goes on to talk about their sins a lot. And a lot of their sins were exactly the opposite of God's heart, which was revealed in the psalm that Bill talked about. His heart for the widow and the orphan and the poor. And these were the very things that Israel was neglecting. They were doing religious things, but their hearts were far from God. So let us end right here. Therefore, the Lord declares, the Lord of hosts, this is verse 24, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I will get relief from my enemies and avenge myself on my foes. I will turn my hand against you and will smelt away your dross as with lye and remove all your alloy. And I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. So you notice with, with those words of Isaiah and with the words of Jesus, he's talking about the love growing cold and, and, and um, those faithless people. These are often the people of God. He's talking to Israel there. He's talking to, to us. He's talking to the church. And so it's a warning to us because the days are coming upon us and there's a lot of deception out there. We need to hold the word of God close to our hearts and live with true motives. And, um, and he, will, he will be our vindication. He will defend us and we will have the victory through whatever darkness and tribulation comes. And in the end, the glorious end, we will live and reign with the Lord forever. Amen.